clinic and tell you everything about like the stuff, even what you ate and what disease you have. So I was looking at Kofsudi um, Mekov, then he must be here. I was looking at must be a few poop from Mustang and I actually stumbled into like a new species. So Tesco DNA did not match anything in the article database, but it matched 100% with each other. And so, and not only that, it showed itself to be exactly like a real old lineage. So I was set on my way to get a PhD through my new species, become Dr. Joshi, make my family proud. <laughs> but two years ago, I quit. I quit the entire field. To understand why I quit, it's not, I think you want to know why I went into wildlife. Um, so when the civil war was happening, I was like, okay, I need to make myself capable so that when the time comes, I'm, I'm, I have my expertise and I can, uh, you know, do what I can for Nepal's development. So for me, science and research was pure. And I was like, this is what I'm going to contribute to Nepal. This is my contribution. But after years and years of being around all that shit, literally and figuratively, you realize that even research for fields with sexism, nepotism, corruption, like politics, it just it just got too much. And it's really sad to see, literally. And, um, and I know I'm not alone because around the world, a lot of women quit the STEM, the science, technology, engineering, math, and So I know like I'm not alone in that. So I had my life's purpose, so I thought, and then I completely changed for it. And then I started drifting, and I found myself at Karthana. Karthana, a lot of people already know, probably know, we do like um, science, um, science extracurricular activities for kids, and they have a kids zone here which you should visit. And he, once I was just sitting there, and somebody's like, you know, Priya, you should try to do a workshop with women. That's a really awesome idea. And then let's get a bunch of girls and just make something. Let's see what happens. So, uh, so my my colleague Samana got a grant from Amrapoilaku College, and uh, we did a five-week workshop. Arunish Dikti was also one of the participants. So the first two weeks, any we did, um, we did, we taught the girls all types of tools: electronics, bio coding, bio carpentry, welding, prototyping, clay, all this stuff. And then the next three weeks, any okay, do whatever you want, make whatever you want. We just let them do it. So by the and some of them worked independently, and some of them worked in groups. So by the end of five weeks, we had uh, like a folding bookcase. We had a, like a cupboard with a sliding like glass door, like a dresser book combo, puja ghar. We had um, Dikti made like a metal with a glass wine lamp. <laughs> we had uh, the beginnings of a reproductive app, which has now been launched later, like newlywed. We had a guitar strap that glowed, like glowed different colors based on light sensors. Like the girls came up with amazing stuff, and I think. Even for them, they're just like, oh, I need this. You know, there was such a shock. And of course, the, what we created out of the workshop was amazing. But what was more amazing for me was the split change in the girls themselves. Like the first week, they're like, you know, they were so uncomfortable with the song. And by the end, they're like, you know, they just like, they were, they had it. And they were helping each other out. And that, that flush of excitement that they got, and like, oh, I drilled this, I drilled this, and it's so easy. You know, that like you saw them suddenly get so like excited, and they suddenly had so much more confidence. And I was like, okay, we definitely need more of this. We need more of nigger taking. Because culturally, it's not just in Nepal. And then girls are not, we just don't grow up using tools. It's not that anybody says, don't do it. Some, some might say, but mostly it's just, we just, it's not encouraged. So we grow up never using even like a screwdriver. And then, and then you grow up and you think, because I've never used it, I cannot use it. And then, so you just think, you just have this thing of yourself. And, so the first time these girls come to make a kitty workshop, and the first time they use something, and they just, you can just see that this thing that they built up of what is possible and what is not just starts to crumble away. And this new self-realization kind of dawns, and like, I can do this. If I can do this, then I can probably also do that. And you see this change, because girls who come to learn carpentry have gone home and fixed their plumbing. And girls who come to do electricity have gone home and fixed their gas stove. You know, even for me, the change, like one day somebody just showed up at my house with eight chickens. And I have four dogs, very vicious, like what do I do, right? If I had not done the maker cakey classes myself, I probably would not even have attempted to make the coup. And then emergency, I call it the emergency coup, right? It just, I probably would not have had the thing of, okay, I can do it, I can make it. But I did it, and I, even for me, like that self-confidence is there. 
And um, another reason why we need Maker TV is because I think this is a homegrown initiative and it's a women's initiative and I think we need us women to kind of reclaim the word maker. You know, maker is not just all masculine and using saws, you know. Our mothers, our grandmothers, and all the generation of women before us were also makers. They made us attire, they made us dresses, matching dresses, sisters, right? They made us like uh, pillowcases. That's also making, that's not anything less than making a cupboard or grilling together like a gate or something. It's, it's equally important. So, it's to, so somehow, Maker KT workshop was just supposed to be us girls coming together having fun, but it sort of became like an exercise in women empowerment. So, yes, I'm no longer discovering species and you know, like, okay, I mean, I miss the wildlife, but I have no regrets for taking the ship because now I feel like my new purpose is to be at the forefront of this resurging kind of maker culture and using making as a tool of good environment. <laughs> your experience led you directly into understanding the importance of what you're doing, which brings so much passion, which is great to see. But my question is, what next? So now you've got women that are making things and they're building this confidence. Are you um, thinking about taking that next step like into the mentoring, consulting, supporting women to actually get into being entrepreneurs? Or is that kind of, you're focusing on the workshops? Where is your focus um, then? I am, so I've done a lot more workshops than the first five yeah. workshops, right? Um, I forgot to say that, thank you, it's all my name. <laughs> so, um, I'll get back to you, but okay. we've done like, when, when the Nakabundi was happening, I could see a lot of girls riding their rusty old cycles, you know, and like, you could see, okay, they hadn't been their cycles in a long time. And even me, I was, starting, I was starting to ride my cycle again, I didn't know what was happening with my gears, and it was so frustrating, because I'm used to sort of getting the basic concept and understanding, and it made me very frustrated that I don't know what's happening to my cycle. So I had like a, fi uh, I had a cycle repair and maintenance workshop for women, and there's not enough making classes, so a lot of boys were interested. And I don't want to know, just girls, no boys, you know? So then we had a second session where we had boys as well, and so there was a lot of interest there. I um, I had a WordPress website as well, a word by, word, WordPress website, and I told me how to do it. And even there, was a lot of boys who were interested, so the second session we did with boys. And then I also made our makerkt.com from that, after taking that website. Uh, making things. Um, we had a electrical, which was really fantastic, like a six day, two week one, where we learned everything. So I'm looking at the wires here and I get it. Like I get what's happening. And I see the socket boxes and I go, oh, I can make that. I've made that in class. You know? So it was really cool. Like one of the participants was kind of unscrewing a socket, was like, she felt she was dismantling the patriarchy, literally. <laughs> so that's the kind of feeling we want, you know? And uh, just recently we finished the part one of the jewelry design workshop. Uh, where we sort of went the conceptualization of like design and making, and the next one will be actually hands-on kind of jewelry design. So I want to continue to give workshops like this, a variety of workshops like this. Uh, there are a couple of rules. It should always have some making. I want people to do something with their hands. It should, it should always be basic. Like, like you should come with no prior knowledge. So anybody can come. We've had participants from like 18 year olds to like 55 year olds, and that's great. That's like amazing. And which is another great thing because these women of these wide age ranges and different backgrounds would never have a chance to come and interact like that otherwise if they weren't to make a kitty workshop. Young girls see these older women, all capable women of different fields, you know? And the older ones get to be this guy again <laughs> and learn something new and they get to be like, oh, I can do this. You know, so most of the older women I feel have already given up, oh, too old for that. But you'd be like, no, you can still learn. You are still capable of so much more than you thought you were. I want to have mixtures as well, not just workshop shop. I want to have social events where women can come and hang out with each other. I want to, I've talked to Arvan already and maybe have like a fair, like a maker nail kind of thing that happens regularly, different things that we want. So I want to make it, um, I want to make it something um, proper, I guess. But, uh, but I don't think I want, I would go into entrepreneurship as well. Because it's more about just, it's a women's empowerment kind of thing, but packaged as a hobby class. You know, not everything has to lead to becoming like a, not everything has to lead to becoming you, like a, you do that for a life thing. It's also be very difficult for me to find instructors. If I'm like, come teach women how to make stuff so that they become your competition. But in Nepal, there's so much competition. So I think it's easy if I just tell them, you know, just teach them as an art and hobby. So yeah, this is not like an entrepreneur building, but maybe they get the confidence and do it. So you 
more about the internal change that happened. But that kind of thing just dawned on 
me and I could see the results and the participants and myself. So it's the making really is to be like a way of getting like women and men to kind of feel more confident about themselves and their own capability. It's like you're not learning something new, you're just learning how to do something which anybody can learn. So now I'm, whenever I see something new these days, I'm just like, oh, I don't know how to do that. Like, I, uh, I can't. Like, that I can't is not in my vocabulary anymore. It's like, okay, I just haven't learned it yet. It's not like, oh, I can't. So of course I can. You know, anything, if you break it down enough, you learn the simplest step first. And then after that, you, like, you want to know, you know more. So that I can't thing is just out of my vocabulary. Because that's exactly what we're seeing unfold here at Community Care with the young people you of like what maker pieces are made and stuff. But the thing is, I have nothing to display because I let the girls just take it home with them. So I have not there. Because like, it's, it's important to take it home so that they have a physical reminder that they did that and they made that. Every day, like, you know, they can say, oh yeah, I made that, I can do that. So I like to give them just, okay, made it, take it home. So, you know, that's why I never have anything to 